Hey guys, uh, this is Dr. Pythos. You also might be knowing me with a different name, uh, the Internet Dentist. So generally, uh, I, I share you know uh, certain topics related to dentistry uh, through medical or educational videos rather. And sometimes I also share videos on patient education. But today it is not about any of them. So today, uh, just because of the lo lockdown times, I also don't have a good setup to you know record videos and and that uh, typical professional kind of setup. Uh, so I'll be, you know, uh, telling you, you a nice story that I hope you you'd really enjoy, and that I am going to, you know, uh, the this is the only setup that I have for now. I mean, this is a laptop on which I have, you know, on the top of that I'm I've kept my notebook, and on that I'll be, you know, sharing a good story with you. So once upon a time, there was a nice little village uh, in which there was there were multiple houses in which there were staying multiple families, and 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 in 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 each household there were. Uh, people uh, so so basically the common thing in them was all of them were having a uh, similar kind of names so either their names were starting from a or c or n or uh, in some and in certain cases it was also starting from n so so these were the people i mean staying in houses uh, lovely people uh, so in, uh, it could be a c n or f so they were staying very in, they were leading a happy life rather in this beautiful village and, uh, suddenly one day what happened is it started to rain yeah, so you can see it is raining. Yeah, and after uh, some time, uh, I mean, uh, not some time. Uh, after you know, uh, it was raining heavily for hours and hours and uh, for days, for weeks. So there was a time when uh, the whole village was flooded and there was water all over it. Yeah. So what happened? You would be wondering what are what are these things? So so uh, I mean, uh, after f uh, say several weeks. The villagers came out of their houses to see that the their village was flooded, and then in between them there were small, you know, uh, little dragons which were wounded or coiled among themselves. So they were not, you know, causing any harm to the uh, villagers or the people. But the only thing that they were doing is they were covering their houses. So uh, they stood up against these snakes, yeah, and and uh, they showed their kind of protest. But these people, these snakes, they did not follow. So so they. They again uh, now they went up against arms against these snakes. So uh, so what will happen? These uh, will have a look onto the next page that the story will try to I mean the story will unfold. Okay, so so rather than going to different page, uh, so uh, let's continue over here this page only. So what happened is that these snakes now uncoiled themselves and grew longer. Yes extended themselves into their full length and they grew to be become larger and uh, the people of the village actually now came I mean they came to know that these were not only uh, small snakes but rather these were dragons okay so so the dragons now extended their tails all around the village in the flooded village rather so what do we have here we have plenty of water we have uh, lengthy chains or dragons with long tails and what do we have? We have houses in which there are C, A, F and sometimes N are staying in the houses. So what will happen uh, in the story that they went up against, uh, I mean they took up arms against these dragons to fight them and they of course carried swords or other uh, weapons. So so they gradually came out of their houses. So I mean uh, C was, I mean uh, they had certain powers. So if you look at the powers, what powers did they have? C had two powers. A had three power strength and had again one power and F had one power again. So these were the power for all these uh, people that were in their houses. So so who would be the one who, who wants to go first to fight them? It was, uh, they, they, they did not want to, I mean these were the younger people, these were very young and, and rather innocent and they were not very much experienced with fighting. So rather it was either C or A who was going to fight them first. But because you know A were more powerful, uh, the overall plan was not to send A people initially for initial fight, rather than the the one uh, starting uh, with I mean whose name were starting with C were so sufficiently powerful also. So they were being sent from respective houses to fight these dragons. So so all the C started coming out, and what they did, they attacked on the tails on these long tails of these dragons. Okay. And they came out of their houses and they were continuously attacking these tails. So what will happen after a certain period? I mean, these are, these are not the only houses. There might be more houses and more snakes even. I mean, dragons. So after some time, you will be watching. I mean, the scene would be like. 
in, in the tails of these dragons there will be multiple seas so these were the seas who were attacking the tails with what could be a, a, a arrow could be sword anything so they were after after a certain uh, time uh, maybe after four minutes so what happened that people could see that uh, these seas were you know attached to the tails of the dragons and these dragons were gradually unfolding them now there, there was you know uh, uh, 24 after 24 so so this is for the after the four minutes this this situation starts coming up so so why not uh, uh, what is the role of n or what is the role of f over here so f f and uh, n were you know they were saving their own houses so they were n and f were only restricting their actions till uh, i mean uh, to their houses so uh, i mean they were not very valiant enough not very uh, brave but they were strong enough to fight their own houses just like little guys who are you know very much you, you know they they are a little bit scared also so so they are happy to fight from their own homes i mean staying close to their home uh, uh, they so they are fighting only from their houses after 24 hours when the seas i mean sea are already bind, uh, uh, attacked or attached to the snakes or dragons uh, tails so after that a now plans another strategy so it is high time a should also go and attack the tails of the dragons so it is the uh, more powerful a which has a power of level 3 so now they went up again i mean uh, went up against these dragons so now after 24 hours the scenario would be like you will be also seeing a a a i mean there will be more a's by the time 24 hours has crossed so there will be lesser c and more a attached to the tails of these dragons true okay so so this is the scenario for 24 hours so what will uh, if you look closely what after 24 hours the scenario scenario would look like and and one more thing uh, i'd like to tell that uh, there were certain dragons who were uh, not entirely defeated so they were still alive they were fighting a and c but there were certain dragons who were very, you know, uh, uh, very much attacked by uh, C and A. So they actually, you know, kind of lost or they, they might also have died. So suppose this dragon, he has so many of C and A uh, who, who are attacking him. So this 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 dude uh, dies in the middle. So what he will do, he will precipitate or he will, I mean, uh, always remember that there is sufficient water in the background. So it, the village is entirely flooded. So what will happen to these dragons the dragons who are uh, completely attacked by c and a they will die and they will settle down in the water okay and then there would be certain dragons who are who are still fighting and they are not entirely dead so they will keep fighting with the a and of course there are houses and on the layer surface of houses there is a layer which is covered by the tail of the snakes you can see this snake is having tail wrapped around this this snake is also having tail wrapped around this and then there is f and c at the same time present over here uh, sorry f and a so what is the moral of the story what are we trying to prove here is that let's now uh, we'll uh, look at the names of this uh, i mean uh, brave warriors so initially it was c which is ca2 plus or calcium ion what is a a is al3 plus or aluminium ion n is sodium and f is fluorine all right so 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 uh, uh, and and what is this this is the entire setting reaction of gic or glass ionomer cement and what is it what is this going on this is the setting reaction okay and and uh, what is these houses now so these houses are basically the silicon or the or the glass particles these are the glass particles whatever houses were there they were nothing but glass particles so, so uh, now you would be uh, wondering uh, uh, what are these glass particles made of? They are made of aluminium, calcium, fluorine and of course glass is made of silicon. So you can call it as alumin uh, aluminium or alumino calcium alumino fluorosilicate or calcium alumino silicate. Okay. So, so this is, these are the glasses. What would be the, uh, now what are the dragons? These dragons are polyacrylic acid which were initially unwinded. They were, I mean, they were winded, wrapped up in themselves. After a certain time, when uh, the setting reaction took place, so if I tell you the sequence of the setting reaction of GIC, it is initially uh, that the situation would look like here. So here it is the glass, the glass particles. I mean, the silica particles, which also, I mean, what kind of glass particle it is? It is the solu soluble, soluble uh, kind of glass, of course, because it will be 
easily uh, dissolved in the uh, uh, in the acid, the polyacrylic acid. So that is why we are calling it uh, dissolvable or soluble form of glass. Which uh, and what would be the you know constituent of the glass? It would be aluminium, calcium, fluoride, and silica. Of course, is the main form of the glass, which will have the uh, ions of calcium, aluminium, and fluoro. Fluorine, uh, fluoride so that is why calcium alumino fluorosilicate and 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 these are the wrapped you know initial uh, uh, snakes or dragons so what are these these are polyacrylic these are chain of acids long chain acids or or rather you can call uh, it as the uh, polymer form of acid so we'll uh, get into details what these acids could be and what is this surrounding this is water so always remember that the entire battlefield i mean the battle was going on or taking place in water medium Okay, so there, there is background of water, then there are houses of silica, what kind of silica or glass particles, we have already discussed, we will go into much details. And we have snakes with long tails, and then, uh, yeah, with long tails, which, which will be unwinded or unfolded later on. So let's have a look at the, you know, stages. So initially, this is the scenario. Then, after some time, pH will go on increasing. And then, uh, what if the pH increases, it will lead to, you know, unwinding the tail of the dragon so the tail will be enlarged which is not that much extended initially so what will that lead to that that will lead to the viscosity of the glass ionomer cement so so once set i mean initially set gic liquid more of a certain point will be more viscous yeah and and it will harden and what uh, what will happen after the unwinding of uh, unwinding of these snakes or these polyacrylic acid will lead to migration migration of this calcium and aluminium from the houses that is silica silica structure or glass structure or powder uh, or to the matrix okay so so uh, yeah so this is called as migration and what will hap happen after this and then there will be a certain critical ph critical ph in which you know um, uh, precipitation will occur so what is the criteria of precipitation precipitation if uh, acid is uh, i mean hugely laden with the ions that is al aluminium or calcium then it will lead to precipitation of it and also ph is somewhat you know uh, influencing the uh, precipitation so uh, what else can occur uh, uh, binding will also occur uh, supposedly i mean provided that the calcium and the aluminium have reached the tail of the snake from the uh, uh, this uh, glass particle or the powder particle so uh, so what is the time uh, time trials or timelines for these setting reactions so initial setting after the calcium starts binding to the tail of the dragon or the polyacrylic acid chain so that is uh, within uh, i mean after it starts after four minutes yeah and uh, when does maturation occur uh, maturation the aluminium starts leaching out from home and they start attacking the tail of the dragon that is polyacrylic acid and and what comes next i mean the timeline would be 24 hours yeah so so why 24 hours so after 24 hours when uh, aluminium has uh, started attacking uh, uh, the polyacrylic acid, the the entire gelation or the hydrogel would be more, uh, uh, you know, stable or less prone to attack by external moisture or desiccation. So moisture or humidity will be less, you know, uh, acting on this hydrogel after 24 hours, and it will be more stable. So uh, let's have a look at the definition. I'm not very interested uh, about the. But in this case, uh, to make it more simple, I'd like to, you know. Uh, show it more uh, diagrammatically and uh, here the definition by Maclean and Wilson in 1994 for the GIC or the glass animal cement was a cement so of course uh, we'll start from uh, you know here so it is a cement that consists of a basic glass so this is a glass I mean it is not uh, I mean so so that is the uh, the glass and then there would be uh, acidic polymer so we have got an acidic uh, acid bottle to represent the acid I mean to represent the acid and then we have a chain that is drawn so so that would be the polymer to represent a polymer so we have a uh, what is uh, uh, GIC GIC is a cement it is a cement that has a uh, consist of a basic glass and an acidic polymer which sits by acid based reaction between the two components so this is it so what would be the property of the glass the, uh, in the glass is acid decomposable and what about the acid polymers the acid polymers typically are polyacrylic uh, so uh, and and they have you know, certain features. Uh, two of them are very important. That is, they should be water soluble. I mean, sorry, uh, water soluble, and they should be polyacrylic. So in order to call uh, a powder or a uh, GIC or glass enamel cement, there are three properties which are very necessary. The first that that 
to include a acid based reaction or it should be setting through acid based reaction and coming to the second point it should have a ion exchange and uh, so it should be ionically adhere to the underlying two structure and the third one is that the ionic activity inside the cement if and after setting should be continuous and still going on after the setting so i think we have already discussed about the composition it is calcium uh, let me just point it out it is calcium aluminium fluoride and silica so you can call it calcium aluminium fluorosilicate and not to forget is also sodium so so sodium and fluoride are not essential for all the type of powders will also you know discuss just after this now coming to the acid uh, so uh, acids are alkanoic acid so what wh what is so unique about the alkanoic acids okay so coming i mean uh, uh, going uh, a little bit of details into the composition of the powder first before going into the acid so we have silica in in the uh, glass uh, which is close to percent then we have aluminum which is 19.9% then we have uh, aluminum fluoride with 2.6% there would be calcium fluoride which would be uh, approximately 34 to 35% and sodium fluoride and aluminum phosphate which would be 3.4 and 10% respectively so i mean it's a it's a little you know busy uh, paper uh, but uh, because of lack of time i'm uh, going bound to discuss it over here itself so what is the overall uh, structure of the powder it is silica oxide aluminum oxide calcium fluoride so this is the basic thing i mean the one which is not covered in the bracket is the basic and it is mandatory and apart from this in addition to this you can also find aluminum phosphate and in addition with that sometimes sodium aluminum phosphate is also there in the powder so coming to the acids so the acid as you can already see uh, uh, can be you know the acids can come along with water so it could be either uh, uh, the acid uh, can be in the form of concentrated aqueous solution 40 to 50 percent by mass or it can uh, acids can come along with the dry powder in form of uh, uh, i mean the dry form of acid could be mixed with the glass powder and uh, and to that you can also add water to uh, so it can be either ways also uh, uh, the acid has certain you know properties which should be there with the acid that is supposed to be with gic so it is the acid should be electrolytic in nature poly electrolyte in nature actually should be a po polymer it is yeah so it in should include copolymer of unsaturated uh, acrylic acid uh, so what are the examples of acids most commonly found it is more acid, certain amount of malic acid uh, so it is not malic acid sorry uh, it is rather maleic acid m a l e i c and then comes itaconic acid i t a c o n i c acid so if in short uh, you have to you know uh, tell the setting reaction g i c this complex thing into simpler you know headings so you can call it as step number 1 which i'd like to call it as so I'd rather call it as acid attack reaction or uh, acid attack step second uh, when the acid actually attacks the glass uh, the uh, the glass particles or powder particles so that is the acid attack then comes the dissolution when uh, this calcium and aluminum from the powder or from the glass matrix comes out to attack the acids now or attach with the uh, so so comes out of the glass is called as dissolution so coming out of the ions from the glass matrix is called as dissolution so the third step would be cross linking so what would be we call it i mean it is quite obvious that once it is uh, the ions are linked to polymers and these polymers if linked to each other would be called as cross linking and finally the maturation stage which is after 2 hours as already discussed wherein calcium are replaced or or uh, the un even unreplaced uh, there would be uh, if, uh, vacant areas which uh, to which aluminum will again bind so so uh, by the end of 24 hours or as the you know maturation proceeds uh, by days or months or years the, the reaction still continues and it is not never 100% that the stop it is very unlikely so by the due course of time it will be mainly predominated by the aluminum that is cross linked to the uh, poly uh, acrylic acid chain rather than calcium so it is mainly by the aluminum and so uh, uh, there, there will be uh, so this is the four step of uh, uh, this 
support stepwise maturation so i mean just as a mnemonic to uh, to remind it so so you can take a, a simple example of any kind of relationship that start with is it an attack that is fighting i mean after after a certain stage and uh, after you have ended fighting up with your uh, with your spouse or with your friend or girlfriend or boyfriend so that will that will be called as dissolution where the matter has been fixed then you people will start bonding so that would be called as cross linking and then there will be a certain time after which the relationship will come to maturity and that is the maturation step so just to you know uh, re- give you guys a quick revision so so if we divide it into only two steps now uh, we have stage 1 and then we will have a stage 2 so initially 20 to 30% of the glass in attached surface of glass particles start to decompose so so uh, initially uh, not the entire glass structure uh, uh, is decomposed only the 20 to 30% of the glass is exposed to the you know uh, uh, is uh, exposed to the uh, acid because it is super superficially lined and and that will be uh, you know decomposed by the uh, acid so what uh, the next step would be surface of the glass particles decompose yes uh, third step would be the release of metal ions into the into the uh, water or into the or uh, into the fluid or the matrix overall the fourth step would be uh, glass network Uh, now breaks down into silicic acid which is polymerizing at the surface of the glass so we, what we can uh, 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 recollect from from the you know if you go back if you go back to the reaction which was happening there so 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 there's a you know hydrogel that is formed over the uh, glass particles which are uh, left undissolved so that is the silica uh, silica silicious or silicious acid that is formed just uh, super uh, just over the glass particles close to it so that is another step and then there will be another step uh, i mean when the ph gradually keeps on increasing uh, and uh, why is it occurring because of the ionization by the acid then there will be a release of ions and that will actually lead to the migration of the ions from the glass particles and uh, uh, due uh, i mean the ph keeps on increasing further and that will lead to the chain unwinding of the polymer or the polyacids and what we you know represented in the in our uh, little story as the unwinding of the snakes to to form a larger tail uh, or in uh, to form a dragon rather what we call so uh, th- then there will be step 2 or stage 2 uh, so at uh, the critical ph the ionic concentration and 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 because of the increase of the ionic concentration there will be a pre- pre- uh, precipitation of the insoluble poly acrylates uh, so so that is only until a critical ph comes or until there is a typical Uh, ionic concentration that has been achieved in the solution and after a certain time calcium and uh, aluminum as we already have seen in the uh, diagram that calcium and aluminum will start binding to the polyanion or the polyacids so what would be the source of binding it would be the carboxyl end which has a negative uh, uh, ion or negative charge and to that the calcium or the aluminum will bind and then there will be a step initial set of the uh, i mean the initial setting of the uh, gic will start Uh, close to after 24 mix minutes of mixing uh, and and that will be called as the initial setting that has start and that will uh, keep on going and, and after a certain period of 24 hours the the uh, entire set would be you know called as uh, maturated maturated or the maturation process will uh, be uh, you know finished by 24 hours and uh, uh, this final one point that aluminum polyacrylic acid will dominate in the entire uh, matrix so i understand uh, i mean the writing is not that good and also i'm holding the uh, on the camera uh, with my hand itself so so it's very difficult but still i tried my best so should there be any point of correction on or any other topic of discussion do please feel free to let me know and also write down in the comment section what to improve and criticism is always what i look forward to they are always welcome if, if you like the video you can you know tell your friends about it share it with your friends with your colleagues and uh, also you can follow me on my instagram page the internet and test facebook page the internet and test and youtube channel the concept best dentistry so thank you for watching